Good morning, everyone, here in the room and online. So this is a little practical exercise for you to kind of get your energy going for the day full of stories, but also to wake up the storyteller in you. You will need your phone for this exercise. <laughs> so here you go. Uh, go to menti.com and put in the code 3194. Five six two eight. People in the room, if you are done, raise your hand. Excellent. Okay, so we can move to the. <laughs> can move to the menti. Yeah. So, and if you're online, uh, the link's in the chat. Um, so we hope you can all get into there. And then in a moment, we'll be able to move on to the very first question. Uh, and while we're waiting uh, for that to pop up, um, as Madhavi said, um, we think there's some people in here that don't believe that they're storytellers. And maybe there's some people at home or wherever you're joining us from online who don't believe that you're storytellers. And I think we would like you to be curious about whether we can change your opinion on that in the next 15 minutes. Yeah, okay. no wrong answers, so be brave. You don't have to hesitate. Everything is anonymous, just go for it. Okay. So. Let's move to the first question. So we've got a map of the world here and a question. Where do you call home? So if you can uh, tap on it, you should be able to drop a pin somewhere. There we go, they're popping up already. But please look at the question carefully. Where do you call home? We're not asking where you're from. We're not asking where you live. That would be sharing a piece of data with us that maybe the person sitting next to you you've never met before could answer on your behalf. This is where do you call home? And that's a different kind of a question. That's a question that means you have to connect personally and have a think. And that means that every single pin on this map relates to a story, a story about you. Okay? And maybe the answer isn't something you can put on a map. And that's a really interesting story too. Maybe home for you is a person or a feeling or an event. So, yeah, keep adding those. <laughs> and we see that we have people in all corners of the world, as well as on the corner of the image. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very curious about this one. But also every place on the map is a unique story. So you and where you call home is special and unique. And this already makes you a storyteller. Exactly. So I think we'll move to the next question. If you could finish the sentence for us, either in one word or a short phrase. So for me, storytelling is a way to. And whatever it is for you, whatever comes to your mind. So connect. Connect, communicate, remember. Share. Engage, express. So we can see that you all have a little bit of different ideas, but there are keywords uh, that are bigger. And these are actually the keywords that will lead us throughout the sessions today about expressing, sharing, connecting, engaging. Yeah. So I'm really pleased that connect came up in the middle there because that leads us very nicely to our to next question. <laughs> <laughs> so we're showing you an image. And if we could just perhaps press S so we can see it in the room on your devices. Oh, you can probably see it on your devices. Here we go. So we've got an image. And what we'd like to do is to connect with your emotions and tell us, how does it make you feel? Because stories make us feel things, right? That's how we connect with them, because it, we share from one person to another a feeling and emotion, and that is what helps us to learn something or to experience something. Um, so I'll describe this image uh, briefly for anyone who can't see it. So we've got a, a painting. Um, it's got a gold frame at the foreground, there's a figure lying on the floor, a well-dressed man, he's got his eyes closed. Next to him, there's uh, a figure in red kneeling next to him. 
with a blue butterfly on their chest and they're holding the wrist up of the, the person that's on the floor and they've got a face painted white with a black nose and a downturned mouth. Um, and we've got a few sort of shadowy figures in the background. So how does it make you feel looking at this image? What emotion are you experiencing? If we could have a look at the answers, let's see what you've come up with. We just press S. Yeah. Sad. Sad. Curious. Concerned. Intrigued. Yeah. So we'll be talking about mental health later on today. Um, but expressing emotions is, and feelings is both good for your mental health, but also to connect with others. Yeah, uncomfortable. I, I agree with that yeah. one. It makes me feel uncomfortable. And I showed this uh, image to my eight-year-old yesterday, and he said it made him feel a bit frightened. Yeah. There is also a lot of scared, concerned, confused. Not everything you tell always has to be positive. Yeah. There are also stories which are difficult, which are problematic, but still can and should be shared. So this is something to keep in mind as well. Yeah. And um, I just wonder if you can think a little bit about how you looked at the, the, the image, because there's different ways of looking at a story. Did you look at the big picture? Did you look at the whole scene? Or were you a kind of lean in on the detail kind of person? Did you look at the, the butterfly? Or did you look at the, you know, the, the man holding the wrist and what's going on there? So. Maybe if you're a big picture kind of person, next time you do a creative exercise, look at the detail and vice versa. Um, it's a nice way of um, seeing what else you can do. Um, and it's great that we've got so many different emotions on there and that just shows you that we all bring something different to a story because the things that we've experienced and how we feel today affect how you interpret um, a piece of art or a story. And that's really useful to remember as well. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the next question. Oh, yeah. Can we hide that one, please, for a second? Because we've already got people answering it. Yeah, so... <laughs> so what is the penguin thinking? So the idea here is for you to use your own words and put them down. Not always the first idea is the best. Sometimes it is. If you don't like it, you can always remove it. But there is, it's always nice to be able to start and actually express yourself in the way as is suitable. For this one, you can use an epic pun. pun. You can just comment maybe what the penguin will see. We guarantee that every story that you will see on the screen will be different. Guess we can show the answers. Yeah, let's see what you think the penguin's thinking. I need the uniform. Can, can I have Get my, my backpack back? back. <laughs> I'm really intrigued Intrigue. by this picture about how it came about and why on earth there's a penguin standing next to a bagpipe player. Yeah, so it's a picture from uh, actually an expedition oh, okay. of a Scottish explorer and being a Scottish explorer, the thing he needed to bring with him was his cultural heritage, so the bagpipes. This was really what he needed there. Uh, but you can see that like each of the answers has a different tone of voice, different way of phrasing things. Some of them are funny, some of them are curious, some of them are punny. So uh, just for you to know that there are so many ways to tell the story and you are making yeah, people laugh, you can make people curious, interested. Yeah, and we're also looking at a figure in the picture that maybe you wouldn't think of thinking about their perspective straight away. Maybe you'd go for the bagpiper or the guy in the background, but you need to look at everybody's perspective, see whose voice hasn't been sort of um, represented here yet. It's probably the penguin. So yeah, be the penguin, I think, is a, is a nice thing to take away from this one. And also don't always take the obvious character because sometimes the one that is maybe in the background has a more interesting story than the main character. I'm really enjoying these, but I think we should probably move to the yeah, next yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, yeah, so we're talking about 
people's voices who hadn't been represented in that last one. Uh, what was the penguin thinking? And we need to look at hidden stories as well, you know, that we have so many stories that are told from the, the same perspectives, traditional views of things. So we want to look for hidden stories. So we've deliberately given you half a picture here to look at. Um, this is a black and white photograph of a woman in a very smart, prim and proper um, portrait. She's holding on to something. So what are the clues here? What's going on? What do you think? What do you think is going on here? And then we'll show you the full picture later on. Again, no bad answers. Whatever comes to your mind is probably good in a way. If not, first you writing, then editing is the <laughs> way we do it. Edit, edit, edit. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, shall we see what you've come up with? Okay. Off on my scooter, wee! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think she's riding a bike. bike? There's lots of bikes. Vespa, very specific. In deep thought while traveling. That's Ooh. a nice one. Next chess, chess move. move. <laughs> Interesting. Water supply, I'm intrigued in that. <laughs> Hairstyle, this is a cool gun. Showing thing. off her ankles. This ah, is a nice one. Yeah, so you think about what else is in the picture. 19th century exercise bike, you're getting close. Yeah, this is close, and we kind of suspect who was answering that. <laughs> <laughs> My hovercraft is ready, yay. Okay. Shall we, shall we show you the whole picture? You're intrigued, aren't you? There we go. So this is a contraption that is designed uh, for people who are too scared to get on a horse. So they can climb up on that and have a go, see what it feels like, get used to the movement, then maybe. And that explains her face, doesn't it? Her expression. Yeah. She's not happy. And this kind of early gym equipment actually was invented by a Swedish physicist Gustav Zander, we have a blog about it on Europeana, and you can see all kinds of machines in there as well. And what is interesting, if you see people all dressed up like this, it really changes kind of your mind about what at leisure means as a way of clothing. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much for taking part in that Menti. Um, I hope you've seen that we all bring different things to stories that we all have different perspectives and experiences and that contributes to the stories that we can tell and that you can find a story in everything, even if you're one of those people who didn't think you were a storyteller when you walked in. If you've managed to answer some of those questions, then maybe think about the fact that you could be a storyteller too. Um, and yeah, we've looked at uh, the idea that you need to connect a personal connection, that we need to use emotion. Uh, we can look at big pictures, we can look at details and we need to look for perspectives that haven't been told and stories that are hidden within the things that we see straight away. So thank you very much. Yeah, so you are about to listen, learn storytelling techniques, different, hear from different people who tell stories, and we would like you to use it to learn, to get inspired, and know that the superpower and the secret sauce to everything that you can learn about storytelling is your personality, your point of view, the language you use, the experience you lived, as well as your taste. So enjoy the rest of the sessions and have a great day. Thank you.